Hello fourth year students, today we are going to start with our first poem in the modern poetry which is entitled Sailing to Byzantium by William Butler Yeats. So before going through the poem we need to know something about the poet himself and then something about the title. Concerning the poet William Butler Yeats, uh, he was born in Dublin in 1865 uh, he's Irish, he's an Irish poet. Uh, he's one of the most prominent 20th century poets, which means that we, uh, as we are studying uh, modern poetry, we have to go through one of his poems at least, because not only his poetry is significant in terms of its modern themes and techniques, but also uh, William Butler Yeats has uh, uh, an important uh, influence on other modern poets. Uh, when we speak about his poetry in general, we are talking about early poetry and then we have uh, later poetry. So uh, some, some critics, some historians, they divide his poetry into two stages. So the early poetry was known to be political and it was devoted to the literary revival and to Irish patriotism. Uh, also, his early writing was focused on love, longing and loss, and Irish myths. So when we speak about his early poetry, we, uh, we are speaking about certain topics, themes that he, uh, let's say, he tackled in his poems, which are, as you notice, are more focused on, let's say, kind of romantic themes and ideas. So we can say that uh, William Butler Yeats in his early uh, times uh, was kind of a romantic poet. Uh, he was more focused on uh, subjects or themes which are related to the political state of his country, of Ireland. Uh, and then when we come to his later poetry, we will see that he engages more with modern techniques and topics. So it is the later poetry which seems uh, very, or let's say, closer to the modern times than the early one. Concerning the poem itself, Yeats wrote this poem at the age of 61. So you see he's, he was uh, really old when he wrote this poem. Why is it important to know this information about the poem? Because the the theme, the main theme of the poem is focused on the idea of uh, old age in opposition to the young age or the uh, young generation. Uh, this idea of uh, getting old, what, what does it mean or what are the consequences of getting old? What are the feelings which accompany becoming older? Uh, Yeats had a long interest in the art and culture of Byzantium. Now, the title, Sailing to Byzantium. So, the, when, we, uh, when we listen to the title, we see that uh, it refers to sailing. Sailing means that there is a journey here taking place. But where this journey is heading to? It is heading to Byzantium. And Byzantium is an old name of what we know today as Istanbul in Turkey. Uh, and then uh, at, at some point it was even called Constantinople. Istanbul. So it was the capital of the Roman Empire, Byzantium. Uh, and if anyone ever uh, has gone, maybe uh, one of you has gone to Turkey, uh, uh, maybe you happen to visit some ancient sites, churches, mosques, uh, you will notice that still there are uh, some ruins from, the, from that period, from the period in which the city was called Byzantium. There are churches and inside these churches you can find موزايك اللي احنا نسميه بالعرب الفسيفساء الموزايك هي نوع من ال خلينا نقول نوع من الزخرفة أو نوع من الأدوات المستخدمة في رسم صور القديسين أو الشخصيات المهمة على جدران الكنائس and it is something like this 
if you have ever seen pictures or maybe if, if you have gone to Turkey if you go to the old churches and even to Hagia Sophia Hagia Sophia if you go there because it was before becoming a mosque it was a church you will see you will notice on the walls this mosaic uh, this is uh, let's see if you notice here we have uh, pictures of Jesus Christ here this is Jesus Christ this is his mother Virgin Mary and this is John the Baptist Yohanna and this is another one for Virgin Mary this is Jesus Christ and this is also the same so wherever you go inside these churches you can find the pictures of mosaics of the, the, the saints important figures uh, in the Christian tradition uh, so um, why is it important also because you are going to see that inside the poem the poet is going to refer to the to these depictions of the saints on the walls of uh, Byzantine churches now if we start through the poem and notice here uh, here in, in, on the left you have the the text of the poem and on the right you have the explanation so you have to follow the colors you see the colors يعني تبعوا الألوان يعني خلينا نقول إذا هنا هنا بالنص أكو فد شيء ملون مثلا بالأخضر هنا أنا من تجي إلى الكومنت يا هو يا كومنت هو اللي خصه هو اللي بنفس اللون يعني أوكي سو لتس سي ذي فيرست فيرست ستانزا وات داز إت سي ذات إز نو كونتري فور أولد مان ذا يونغ إن ون أنذرز أرمز بيردز إن ذا تريز ذوز داينغ جينيريشنز آت ذير سونغ the salmon falls, the mackerel crowded seas, fish, flesh, or fowl commend all summer long. Whatever is begotten, born, and dies, caught in that sensual music, all neglect monuments of unaging intellect. So from the beginning, let's see what the poet is talking about. Uh, the first word, word is interesting, that. When do we use that? We, we use it when we are already, we have already mentioned some place or something and then we say that so that this, the, the listener can understand what we are referring to. So here that, what does it uh, refer to? That gives the reader the sense that the speaker is looking at his former country from a distance. That is no country for old men. Here the poet is talking about his own country he, he refers to this country that it is a place that is not suitable for old people you remember that our poet wrote his poem when he wa when he is uh, sorry when he was 61 years old so he's already an old man uh, but he believes that his country is not suitable for old people like him <coughs> sorry and here that instead w why didn't he use for example this it gives us the impression that the speaker has already left his country maybe he's talking from a very far away distance uh, about this country that he already left behind why is it not suitable for old people because look here the young in one another's arms birds in the trees so what do we have in this country we have young people and you see when he says in one another's arms means that they are in love uh, with each other they are spending their time uh, let's say uh, falling in love having these kind of feelings uh, passion what do we have else we have birds in the trees every aspect of life revival life living living creatures Notice this expression here, those dying generations, those dying generations. What does he mean by this? Look at the explanation here. The, uh, sorry, the people in the speaker's former country are all young and in love. Birds are singing. The speaker bitterly tells that all of these creatures will one day grow old as well. 
those dying generations what does this mean it means that any living creature whether it is man or any other kind of creatures one day they are going to die this is one of the uh, let's say characteristics uh, of living creatures that at a certain point they are all going to die mortal we are mortals at their song the salmon falls the mackerel crowded seas you see so this a place this country which the poet is saying uh, that it is not suitable for old people it is filled with all aspects of life uh, fish flesh or fowl all living creatures all of them uh, whatever is begotten born and dies so uh, you see what is this thing that all living creatures share or this is common features between them it is that they are all born and they are going to die one day so this mortality this mortality according to the poet is something that it, that is bothering him why is it bothering him let's see here the last two lines he said caught in that sensual music sensual look at this word sensual sensual we can say is the opposite of uh, let's say spiritual things which are sensual okay coat in that sensual music all neglect so because everything here is live is alive uh, we have people who are still young and passionate about life those people or those uh, let's say uh, living things they all neglect monuments of unaging intellect look at this point here instead of concentrating on things which last forever like intellect they enjoy sensual things so instead of concentrating on things that are intellectual spiritual because you see uh, sensual things material things uh, they are coming to an end at a certain point they die they wither but when we speak about spiritual, intellectual, يعني الأشياء المعنوية والفكرية والروحانية هي اللي تبقى دائما تستمر عكس الأشياء المادية. So this place, you see, in this stanza, the poet is telling us about his own country. Why is it uh, that he is not satisfied with this place? He is an old man, and he thinks that the aspects of life and youth in his country are not suitable for him. In the second stanza, look here, an aged man is but a paltry thing, a tattered coat upon a stick. So you see, it, does it, it seems that our poet is not so, uh, he doesn't like uh, how the old people uh, appear. For example, here he's comparing an old man to an insignificant. Poultry means insignificant. Uh, he compares an old man to an insignificant small thing. So when you look at uh, old people, you think, or maybe some, some people start to think that old people have uh, no ability to do anything. They are just old. They have lost all power and ability. Uh, they are just helpless you see insignificant unless soul clap its hands and sing and louder sing but look at this line here uh, just because one is old it does not mean he has an old soul so becoming old for in, in, in body let's say in the material body doesn't mean that your soul is or has has become old as well what makes the soul young so if, if the body ages and becomes old what about the soul what keeps the soul from aging according to the poet for the soul of the old man is clapping and singing loudly what does clapping and singing here signify what does it signify it signifies that for anyone in order to stay uh, or to to keep uh, a young soul they have to be creative they have to do something 
uh, creative and here singing notice singing usually we associate happiness joy to singing and also uh, the ability to sing means the ability to be creative to create something and as long as man has the ability to create things to be creative it means that their soul has never uh, died yet they are still alive you see soul clap its hands and sing and louder sing for every tattern in its mortal dress nor is their singing school but studying monuments of its own magnificence so for for a soul to keep itself creative to keep itself alive where, where can the poet go to in order to keep that in order to make his soul alive again look at this note here unfortunately there is nothing in this material world which allows the soul to sing so in, in, in this country that he lives in there is a difficulty in making the soul remain uh, creative so where has uh, the poet or where, where does he uh, where should he uh, go to in order to attain this ability in the material world there is nothing like this we have to go somewhere else okay and therefore I have sailed the seas and come to the holy city of Byzantium so here we now understand the reason why the poet chose Byzantium because Byzantium is a is an ancient city uh, it has still these uh, monuments churches which uh, have a great deal of spirituality in them so he has chosen to go to this old ancient city and you see again we have this idea of going to the east to the orient in order to search for spi for spirituality in order to search for a meaning so here notice here this note and escape from the cycles of mortality to a place where the soul can sing so because his country is so material uh, and it is mortal the speaker is now looking to go to somewhere else in which he can find more spirituality and this place is the city of or the ancient city of Byzantium see that the crown any film got the mail share the hadith get to come and who had to have an actor shower up so I do me path on and man up path on and she okay the third one the third stanza O oh, sages standing in God's holy fire as in the gold mosaic of all so from this we understand that our our poet has really reached to Byzantium and of course this journey is a metaphorical one it is not a real one because the ancient city of Byzantium has faded away many centuries ago okay sages what do you mean by sages sages mean wise people and here he is referring to the uh, let's say to the uh, the saints the pictures of the saints on the wall he is calling them he's calling them to enlighten his soul with life he's asking them to give him the life which he seeks to his spirit to his soul okay come from the holy fire burn in a gyre the speaker wants the sages to be the masters of his soul helping him to sing to be creative now we have to uh, focus here on this expression pern in a gyre pern in a gyre of course the word pern you can't find it easily in the dictionary because i think it's an irish word uh, but here it means a spin notice here it means a spin and this is interesting here why it is interesting this expression means spiral movement spiral movement uh, not circular no spiral there is a point there is a focal point a center and this movement uh, this spiral movement goes from down to upward upward movement but in a spiral way يعني حركة لولبية خلينا نقول من الأسفل أكو فد نقطة ارتكاز وأكو حركة لولبية تدور حول هاي النقطة 
uh, what does this mean or what uh, what is the significance of this this uh, movement this spiral movement actually is a symbol of uh, ascending you see the speaker wants to be a focal point while the sages lead and guide him spiritually okay so he wants to ascend in this spiral movement he wants to be guided uh, by the sages he wants them to be his uh, leaders okay consume my heart away consume my heart away sick with desire and fastened to a dying animal here the, the expression dying animal he means the body the mortal body يعني الجسد الجسد الانسان هو هنا شوف يوصفه انه هو كانما هو شيء يعني خلينا نقول انه هو حيوان يوصف الجسد جسد الانسان بهذه الطريقه dying and he is referring to this body as dying here our speaker has a problem with the idea of mortality that human body just like any other living creature is going to die one day this is a problem for our speaker uh, he thinks that uh, because of this problem he should search for kind of immortality okay the speaker sick of the flesh sorry is here we have to the speaker is sick uh, sorry uh, of the flesh and blood existence he doesn't want the natural physical material existence because what is the use of this existence if one day a uh, person is going to lose his body you know what happens to people in death their bodies decay they just decay and this uh, this is bothering our speaker so here he refers to the body as a dying animal so he's asking the saints he's asking the sages to take this uh, mortal body from him to take the mortal body from him and give him what instead يعني ياخذون من عنده جسده الفاني جسده الطبيعي وينطون في شيء في المقابل اللي هو شنو the speaker wants to be transformed from the decaying natural world into the artificial and eternal world of art so uh, here our speaker believes that the the alternative for the physical existence for the natural existence is an artificial existence where in the world of art what does this mean he's going to give us a clear idea uh, in the next stanza which is the last one once out of nature i shall never take my bodily form from any natural thing so he he's uh, he wants to come out of nature of the natural body and instead of that he doesn't want anything related to na to nature again after leaving the natural body the speaker announces that he would like to take his form in grecian urns or enameling handcrafted by goldsmith look here but such a form as grecian goldsmith make of hammered gold and gold enameling to keep a drowsy emperor awake so he wishes after leaving the natural body to become something artistic something or let's say kind of uh, let's say an urn تعرفون هاي الأرن اللي هي يقصد بيها الخزفيات يعني اكو هاي اذا شايفينها اللي هي كانوا اليونان يصنعوها غريشن هنا تجي بمعنى يونان التحافيات اليونانية اذا شايفيها مصنوعة من الذهب he wants to become something artistic he wants to uh, to be shaped uh, by goldsmith to become something hammered with gold why do you think he would choose gold gold you see is one of the metals which uh, lasts for a very very long time يعني هسه لو نشوف اكثر ال التحافيات او هاي المعابد القديمة سواء كانت المعابد المصرية مثلا خلينا نقول راح تشوفون انه اكثر التحافيات اللي او الاثار اللي اللي طلعوها من عندها هي تكون مصنوعة من الذهب 
why gold because gold lasts for a long time very very long time and also at the same time it is a very bright and beautiful kind of metal okay uh, so he wishes to become an artistic uh, form which is maybe placed in some kind of uh, palace uh, to f for a, s some emperor to look at uh, and to appreciate as uh, an artistic uh, thing to take pleasure from that okay so he wishes to become a Grecian urn or enameling handicrafted by goldsmith so that an emperor could spend his nights admiring him in the artwork. So our speaker believes that his existence as an artistic form gives him immortality, not like being a living person with a natural body or set upon a golden bough to sing or maybe he would be created in a form of a golden bird you see or he could be transformed into a golden bird singing in all times why why would he become a golden bird because you see a uh, uh, golden bird it means that it is an artificial bird which is made in order to produce certain sounds and it can still also be kept for a very long time and when anyone listen to this uh, golden bird whether they are the lords and ladies of Byzantium they are going to enjoy it and this time uh, sorry this song is going to pass the test of time so uh, artistic work according to the speaker uh, they can defy death and mortality artistic things last forever they can be immortal not like the natural things uh, eternal and not subject to decay and death you see يعني هنا باختصار خلينا نقول الشاعر يتكلم عن كون الفن او الاشياء اللي تكون مرتبطه بالفن هي اكثر بقاء ودواما من الاشياء اللي هي طبيعيه اللي ممكن تخضع لقانون الحياه well, mode. You see, so here we have different themes. We have the, uh, let's say, the theme of old age versus young age. Uh, we have also the idea of nature versus art. Uh, which one uh, enables man to uh, to be immortal? According to the poet, it is the artificial, the artistic one. Uh, so this is in a brief let's say the explanation of the poem later on I'm going to give you more detailed uh, explanation of the main themes uh, and also we are going to have some questions to be answered concerning the poem see you next time